So after a little break, we are back. We are holding up page Tzadik Ches, which is opposite of page 194. And although we're still in the middle of Perik Ches, we are moving on to a new topic. The topic of Tshuva Ilah. We're five lines from the bottom of the page, which says Umeyachar. So up until this point, we've spoken about what an Aveda causes, the um, severing of the Neshama from its source above, and we've explained what Shuva is. Shuva is this absolute resolve to, um, to start listening again to Hashem, not to be anymore a Pirek oil. Not to be someone who uh, disregards the yoke of heaven, but to accept the Ratzon of Hashem. We've discussed how a person is able to reach this place of tshuva. Al Rebbe to discuss the different his boininos, the different meditations that bring a person to this point. And once a person has done that, so then we rectify the damage that was done through the Avera. We reconnect our neshama to its source. <coughs> we reconnect also the divine energy of the hay of Hashem's name, which we dragged on into Klippa, we reconnect that also to its source. As mentioned in a previous class, that elsewhere the Alter Rebbe brings an example, a muscle from this. Imagine if a person who was decapitated, if there was some medical way to reattach the head to the body. That's what really what Shuva is all about. It's reattaching, reattaching the head to the body, re- reconnecting um, that which was cut off through the Averis. So that restores a person from the state where they were, which was a place which was a damaged place, a spiritually damaged place, a place of klipa, a place, as the Alter Rebbe says in the last period, a place of misa, a place of spiritual death, because life is synonymous with connection to Hashem, and this connection from Hashem is misa, is death. So when we talk about the word tshuva, so yeah, we explained that according to Kabbalah, you have Tashu Hay, restoring the Hay to its place, but also on a very simple level. The word Shuva means to return, which means return to an original state. You're rebooting. You know, and on the phone when there's a, your phone is completely messed up sometimes. You know, this happens to my wife happened to my wife's phone a few weeks ago. You have to restore the phone to the factory settings. That's what you have to do, because it's too messed up to, uh, to fix. So you have to restore the phone to its factory settings. In Taki, you lose all the information, you lose your contacts and everything. But that's what really tshuva is. Tshuva is, you, is, is a restoration. And the Rebbe points out in a very famous sicha that our, you know, we're, at, we're, into, we're almost by uh, Rosh Hashanah already. We talk about tshuva, tefillah, and tzedakah. I think we might have spoken about this in the past. The three, um, you might want to say, pillars of the Avayda of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Tshuva, and Tefillah, and Tzedakah. And the Rebbe points out, what's interesting is that, you know, as part of my job, I have to do a lot of translations. Because I write. So when you write, you have to translate texts, whether it's from Chumash, or from the Gemara, or from Chassidus, or from Chumarach, whatever it may be. And there's always an inherent uh, difficulty in translation, because... Besides the fact that certain words just can't be translated, there is no word to translate that word. For example, nachas. Go translate nachas. Or uh, shlomazel. Sgula. There are certain, there are certain words, and I'm, I already know that someone at another desk, how do you translate sgula? There is no translation. Sometimes it takes a complete sentence to translate a single word. And by the way, it works the other way around also. There are certain words in English that don't have... Um, that don't have um, an equivalent, an exact equivalent in Yiddish or in Lashon HaKadosh. So translation is always difficult. And that points out that these three words of Tshuva, Tefillah, and Tzedakah, all three of them, the English translation does not do justice to the words. An easier one is Tzedakah. Tzedakah is translated as charity. But what does the word Tzedakah really mean? Righteousness. And if you think into it, righteousness is... V- you might even want to say it's the opposite of, I don't know if the opposite, but it's very, very different than charity. Charity implies the kindness of my heart. 
which is a chesed, right? But um, we don't say chesed, we say tzedakah, which means that for a yid, tzedakah is not something which is charity, it's the right thing to do. It's tzedak, 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 tzedak. Tefillah also, prayer. The idea of tefillah, which according to Chesidus, is related to the word toifel, which means to connect. If you look at the name Naftali, so the word, the, the word tefillah is connected to the, word, to, to the name Naftali. But Rashi also says Naftuli is from a connection, like a wick, which is uh, twisted together. And in the Lashon of the Mishnah, you have Hatoifel Klei Cheres, which means that someone who attaches um, different pieces of clay shards to make out of them a keli. And the idea of Tefillah, according to Chesidus, is connection, which again, that's, uh, that's lost in the English translation. But also when it comes to Tshuva, repentance. When the actual translation would be return or restoration which the word repentance does not have that connotation, which implies is, I am really, I'm merely restoring myself to the state where I was beforehand. I don't have to change, I have to revert. Which is a very, very big difference. Um, so on a very simple level, when we, were, when we were born, we're all tzaddikim when we are born. We're all tzaddikim. Wait, we have no mitzvahs when we're born. So uh, we hope, we but we have no averus either. So we're, we're, we're a clean slate. Well, it depends how you define the word tzaddik. Is tzaddik uh, a, a, a person who does mitzvahs or a lack of averis? Well, as we we're born, we have a neshama, a neshama which is pure, a neshama which is holy, a neshama which is unsullied, just like a tzaddik does. And then we do an averis, we mess up that holy neshama that we have. We're also a cotton, so we don't have that. Okay, disregard the word tzaddik. When we are born, we have a neshama which is undamaged and pure and connected, right? All of that. We need to get back, then we do our various, we mess that up. And we need to return to the state which, in which we were. It's not that we have to achieve a new madrega, we're actually returning to where we were, tshuva, especially returning. But that's the lower level of tshuva. The lower level of tshuva is returning to the state in which I was before I did the avera. Before I did the avera, I was mekabel, I, I was someone who accepted upon myself the yoke of heaven. Right now, through an Aveda, I became a Poyrek oil. I need to re return myself to a state of Kabbalah's oil to Hashem and, re and, and restore my neshama to its undamaged place where it was. But now we are going to move to a higher level of tshuva, which we introduced in the beginning of Perek Dalad when we talked about that the Zoyer says there's two levels of tshuva. There's tshuva tata and tshuva ilah, the lower level of tshuva, the higher level of tshuva. The higher level of tshuva is also returning. But not returning to the state in which I was before I did the Avera, but returning to the state that my neshama was before it came down here into a body. How do you do that? How do we do that? That's and a good you, question. How do you define it? How do you define it? Let's do, let's look this inside. Let's do, do this inside, and we'll figure out how to define it and how to do it. Again, page Sadik Ches, opposite of page one ninety four, five lines from the bottom. This is yeah the ultimate return, the ultimate tshuva. Now once, this is a Pasuk from Iyev, where it talks about how the wind passes, and it purifies the heaven from the clouds, clears the, clears the sky. Maybe we can use that outside right now. Um, so there's a, here we have a Ruach Tahara. When a person does Tshuva, so there's a Ruach Tahara, Ruach Tshuva, which passes, and it purifies a person. As I then, Tuchal Nafsham Lashuv Ad Havayi Baruchu, now the Neshama can return to Hashem Mamish. Which you realize, Tshuva Ilah cannot precede Tshuva Tata. In other words, you can't, you can't have a damaged Neshama and try to restore the Neshama to the place where it was even before the Neshama came down into the world. The first thing that has to happen is Tshuva Tata, is the lower level of Tshuva. But once you've done that, once your Neshama has been restore it to the factory settings. Now we need to restore it to before the factory settings. Velali smila maila, the neshama can ascend higher and higher, lemakura to its source. Viladafka ba yisbarach and to connect to Hashem beyichud nifla with an incredible unity. Just by chance, does anyone here remember the words yichud nifla from anywhere in Tanya? No. No, it was a long, long time ago. 
My memory is not that long. Perikei, to be precise. <laughs> not Perikei of Egeret Shachuva, not Perikei even of Shaykh of Amunah, but Perikei of Lukudim Amunah. So we're talking, probably going back, I don't know how long we're, we're learning here for, probably four or five years. Where the Altarebbe talks about how when a person learns Torah, there's a Yichud Nifla, which is with Hashem, which is a, wond- a, a tremendous and wondrous um, Yichud. And we're Again, what is this idea of tshuva to return the neshama? Just like the neshama was at one and connected, united with Hashem, with an absolute unity. Before Hashem breathed it out with the breath of his mouth, laid it lamato lislabish beguf ha'adam to come down here into this world and to be mislabish beguf ha'adam and comes down into the body of a person. As it is al darach mashal with a person hanefech beruach piv who blows with the breath of his mouth b'terem sheyetsa ruach mepiv before the breath leaves the mouth whom yuchad benafshe it is united with the soul v'zuhi tshuva shleiman this is a complete tshuva so earlier on in shariyichu in in igeres tshuva we we explained. Havayipach ba'ap of nishmas chaim that the neshama of Ayid comes from directly from Hashem. Hashem breathed it into us, and we spoke about how the tremendous um, closeness to Hashem that this implies, because the all of creation was created through Hashem's dibur. B'dvar Hashem shemayim nasu, right? Everything was created through Hashem's dibur. Basara mamaris nivra ha'olam, as opposed to Klal Yisrael, the neshama of Ayid was created through vayipach through. Hashem blowing. Mo- is Moshe here? I guess he's on the first floor. Okay. okay. No, he probably hears this and probably come up. Yeah. I do, yeah. Al Kutitera. Yeah. Okay, it's hard for me to get it. Yeah. <coughs> so, as we explained at length in the previous Prakim, Thank you very much. As we explained at length in previous prakim, that speech, the breath that is exhaled and expelled from the body through speech, is not doesn't come from the primius. So that's why when uh, you speak, you can speak for a long time and not get tired. Whereas if you're blowing, try blowing balloons for an hour, you can, you'll faint. You won't be able to because it's coming from somewhere which is much deeper. So the neshama sokfali shall emanate from a much deeper place. At the same time, although the neshamas of Kali shall come from a deeper place, come from this vayipach, ultimately, when the breath leaves the body, it becomes a mitzvah for itself. It's not one with you anymore. It comes from a very deep place, but now it's a mitzvah all for itself. When the breath is inside you, it's still part of who you are. And the same thing is also with the neshama, that the neshama, although we come from a very, very deep place in Hashem, but once the neshama comes down here into this world and enters a body, it becomes a very, it becomes an independent metzias, which is sourced in Hashem. But it is a metzias. And this is true even about a tzaddik, even about someone who has never done an avera, even a tzaddik on a very, very high level. So what is the purpose of the higher level of tshuva? It's not restoring the factory settings. Because ultimately the factory settings, if you're talking about, if, if the factory settings means the neshama as it is in the guf, it's the neshama already as it is a mitzis that extends outside of Hashem Kavi Yochel. We The higher level of tshuva is returning, is returning the neshama to the place, to that unity of Hashem that it was, where it was beforehand. So if the lower level of tshuva takes a person who's a poyerik oil and makes him into a someone who is mekabel oil malcha shemayim, or to put it in different words, takes a rasha and makes him into a tzaddik, which is why, as we discussed in poyerik aleph, the halacha that uh, that uh, that someone who's mekadash a woman on the nasha needs tzaddik gamur, even if the person's a Rasha Gamur, because Tshuva takes you from being a Rasha to being a Tzaddik, but even a Tzaddik is a Metzias. The higher level of Tshuva, Tshuva Ilam, takes Yesh and makes it into Ayin. The lower level of Tshuva takes a Rasha and makes it into a Tzaddik, but even a Tzaddik is a Yesh. 
the higher level of tshuva is to take a yesh and revert it to ayin, to its state of nothingness where it was before it was created. And based on this, we can understand why it's explained in Chassidus many times that tshuva is not something which is relegated only to Rishayim. Tzadikim also can and must do tshuva. Just to quote you a mimer from the Alter Rebbe, in my modern for Shabbos tshuva, he says, So first of all, a little earlier on he says, says, Ke'olim toyim leymar, the world makes the mistake to say, that dafke anoshim p'chusi erach. That is dafke people who are of, as you said, low value. Lowly people. Wabali averis, heim, heim, matshichim tshuva. They're the ones who need to do tshuva. That's not the case at all. And later on he expounds in it where he says, he says, You ever wonder about that? Tzadikim Gemurim, what are they doing? Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, what, what's, what, what, is it, what does it mean for them? They didn't do any Averis. And we don't say, you know, in Chazal we say, Torah talks to the majority. But at the end of the day, are you going to say that Tzadikim Pashat, for them, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur isn't relevant? He says, no. But he said, in Tzadik Baaretz, Asher lo Yechta. So no such Tzadik Tzadik Gavim. Okay, there's no such thing as a tzad de gamar. So why the pastor said, and tzad de gamar, Okay, okay. 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 Yechta doesn't mean to do a sin, the pastors. You know, kol ha'imer david chate ena l'toya. Yechta means, v'lashen te bi machti yasamatara. In other words, not to be mekavin to exact. But he says, but okay, I hear you're saying that the uh, Shalim Kippur is because if they made a, they made an error, they didn't do avodas on their level, they should have. But here the Alter Rebbe says, that this is the whole the whole idea of, 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 of a, the whole purpose of human being is to do tshuva and he says the Indian tshuva the idea of tshuva actually connects it to the idea of Shabbos which we'll talk about in Mir Tzashem either next year or this year afterwards because the word Shabbos is the same, same letters as the word tshuva which is also connected to Shabbos Tshuva, which is coming up. Where we have what to talk about in the upcoming weeks. Hush, Sorry? Hush, Shabbos is the same Tshuva, right. But, but, but the, word, the, the root of the word Shabbos is Tashiv. Tashiv, you know, is, is to return. Is what? Is what? It's Tashiv, to return. Tashiv. They're related. That was right. Shabbos. Yeah. Shabbos is Shabbos. He says, <coughs> the, Hainu, the idea of Tshuva, which is also the idea of Shabbos, which we're not going to talk about right now, is Chazaras Hadvarim Lamekoyerin Vesharshan. Tshuva is returning things, restoring things to their source, the way they originally were. Tshuva is not necessarily about Averis. What is Tshuva? To restore the Neshama. The Neshama which came down all the way down here with the Slab Shabbat Varm Gashmim and it, dre- it got dressed up in physical things. El Mekayr of Asharsha to its source, Ladafka by Yisbarach to connect to Hashem, and Levatl with Tsayni, Ibn Ratsan Elyon, to be Mavatl once Ratsan before the Ratsan Elyon. So Tzadikim also have trouble what to do. In fact, it's brought down that Mashiach Asa, it's brought down in Hasidus, quoted from Kabbalah, Mashiach Asa la Asava Tzadikaya Bitiyufta, that the purpose of Mashiach's coming is to get the Tzadikim to do Tshuva also. Maybe we'll understand a little better by the time we finish here today. But ultimately, Tzadikim also have to do Tshuva. Again, if we're understanding Tshuva, Bara Averis, Tshuva Tata Otake is not Shaykh to Tzadikim. But Tshuva Yilah, Beferis is Shaykh. There's no Vidu with Tshuva Yilah. Sorry? There's no Vidu. It's have nothing more to be mistaken. No, it's a different, it's, a, it's, a, it's on a different level altogether. Yeah. Why do Tzadikim say Vidu? That's another question. The <laughs> Reb Chaim Vital actually addresses that, and he says that, the, which maybe also answers the, the question entirely. Reb Chaim Vital says that that which he talks about his teacher, the 
Dari says the fact that Darizal said um, um, said vidui is because all yidin are koyma achashleima. All yidin are one are one large body, and therefore the avera of one limb affects also the other limb. So even a tzaddik is affected by. Someone That's what we say in the plural. Right, 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 right. So we have our two stages again. Number one is restoring the neshama to was beforehand, and again, which means take making it from a tzaddik to a rasha, a rasha to a tzaddik, and then we have the second level restoring it the way it was beforehand, which we still didn't figure out how that's done. But that's the higher level of tshuva, which is again taking something which is a yesh and being mevatled completely to Hashem to the point that it becomes ayin. And is that along the lines of bittel? Yeah, not along the lines. That's the idea of bitl. It is batlis. Totally is batlis. Vizui tshuva shleima, the Alter Rebbe says, this is the complete tshuva. In other words, you might think that for the Aveira itself, the only thing you need to do is tshuva tata. And tshuva ilah is unrelated. Once you've done tshuva for the Aveira, tshuva ilah is a different process altogether. But the words vizui tshuva shleima, the Alter Rebbe is saying is, even your tshuva for the Aveira is incomplete until you've done tshuva ilah. And why is that? Think about it. Why did you do the Aveira? Yeah, because you were a Pairakoil. But why were you a Pairakoil? What allowed for the possibility of you being Pairakoil? The fact that you're a Yesh. You want to completely eradicate the Aveira and its causes. For that you need tshuva tata, but then you also need tshuva ilah. Once you do tshuva ilah, then you're completely assured that you can't do an Aveira again because you've taken away the very source of the, of, of the Aveira. Ultimately, why is it possible for a person to decide, I don't want to do what Hashem wants. I don't want the yoke of heaven. I'm going to do what I want. Ultimately, it's because you're a Metzius. If you're not a Metzius, if you're completely bottled to Hashem, not only, again, in other words, and when you finish your tshuva tata, you're still a metzius. You're a metzius who's doing what Hashem wants. But if you're a metzius who's doing what Hashem wants, tomorrow you can turn around and say that I'm a metzius who's not doing what Hashem wants. The ultimate antidote to Navera. And how do you know you've completely, completely moved away from Navera to the extent that there's no possibility whatsoever for you again to do an Navera is after you've accomplished tshuva ilah. This level of tshuva that we're talking about, which is again restoring the neshama to the way it was before the neshama, before the person came down here into this world, that is tshuva ilah, shala achar tshuva tata, which follows tshuva tata. As it says in the Zayar, v'rayim mehem na parshas nasaim, the tshuva ilah. Though what is tshuva ilah? He this asig be'eraisa. To learn Torah, to preoccupy yourself with Torah, with fear, reverence, and love for Hashem, the Chulu. The Ihu, and the Zayar says, this is Ben Yudke Bina, the Chulu. This is Ben Yudke, which is Bina. I'll have to explain what all that means. Patience, patience. Okay. Tshuva law is associated with Bina. Which is also, if you remember, tshuva ilah is the hay is the hay ilah, and the hay ilah, the higher level of hay in the neshama, if you remember, is bina. Remember, we spoke yud is chachma, and hay is bina, and the vav are the midas, and the last day is malchus. So tshuva hata, tshuva ilah is associated with bina, which is what does bina mean in avodas Hashem? Is the studying of Torah, oh, studying, studying of realize. studying Torah, bina. Being as meichin is understanding, so learning Torah. What is that? As opposed to, by the way, the hay, the last hay of Hashem's name, the side of the second hay, the hay tata, is associated with malchus, and malchus, as we know, is machshava dibur amaisa. So the lower level of tshuva is a resolve that from now on, that the lower level of tshuva, tshuva tata, is the hay tata, is the lower hay of the neshama. Which means the resolve that my machshava, dibra maisa, from now on, are going to be the way Hashem wants to. It's a practical. I'm going to do what Hashem wants. I'm going to be mekabel oil malchus shamayim. The higher hey, bina, which is true law, is the mind. It's preoccupying oneself with the study of Torah. After one has cleaned themselves off from the Aveda through tshuva tata, then comes studying Torah. 
which when you study Torah, as we mentioned earlier, there's a yichud nifla with Hashem, a complete unity with Hashem. You're actually connecting to Hashem on a level which is reminiscent of the way the neshama was connected to Hashem before it came down here into this world. Let's understand this a little better. Studying Torah is the ultimate bitl, and we'll explain why that is. Because some people learn Torah and they don't have any. Sorry. Some people learn to learn Gemara and you know, and they don't have any bitzes. Like like you know, learning the law, you know, like on a level like law school. Right. What does the Zayar say? Read the words of the Zayar. The Yisasek Beiraisa. What's the next words? What does that mean? Not that you're studying Torah like in law school, but we'll get to that also. Okay. <laughs> Not just bringing it out as a contract. Right, right. No, we'll, we'll, we're, we have a lot more to discuss. As Dr. Rebbe explained in Perikei and Tanya, the ultimate unity that a Yid achieves with Hashem is to limit HaTorah. First thing we have to know about the Torah, this is something which Dr. Rebbe says many times in the Kuti Ambarim, Hu v'chachmasay echad. That Hashem is the one thing with the, Hashem and Torah is one and the same. As the Rambam says, there's a rice of a kuchabrihu kulachad. That's not the Rambam, that's a, a Lashen, a, a phrase which is you find many times in, in Hasidus, a rice of a kuchabrihu kulachad, the Torah is one with Hashem. And the words of the Rambam, hu hamada, hu ayedeya, hu ayedua. That Hashem and his mada, and, his yedea, and Hashem and his knowledge, which is Torah, is one thing. And that's why we have the Torah begins, the Saras Hadibris begins with the word Anoichi, which as the Gemara says in Masech the Shabbos, the word Anoichi is an acronym, it's Rosh Tevis, for the words Ano Nafshi Ksavis Yehavis, which means Hashem says, I, Ano, I, Nafshi, my soul, Ksavis, I've written it into the Torah and Yehavis and I've given it to you. The words of the Alter Rebbe. If you want, you could turn to um, page one thirty-two, the bottom line. Avol anachnu, the Alter Rebbe says, but us, Yerusha matana hilanu. We have the Torah as a Yerusha and a matana. Shanasan lanu as terasek. The Rashem gave us this Torah. Vehil bishbar ritzoyne vechachmasa yizbarach, and he invested in the Torah his own ratzen and his own chachmam. Hashem's Ratzin and Chachma, which are one with Hashem with absolute unity. When Hashem gives us the Torah, it's as if He gives us Himself. Zayr says in the Passover, the words Vayichuli Truma. Take from me a donation, don't make sense. It should say, Venasan. Vena, yeah, Venasan They should give me a donation. So the Zayar says that Truma is, is, is the Torah. The word Truma is the word Torah, which was given to us in, in, in 40 days. That's why there's a mem. Truma is Torah mem. And when we learn Torah, the Yikhu, we take Hashem. And the Zayar says, it doesn't say, V'yikhu li v'truma, you take me and, and Torah. V'yikhu li truma, you take me through Torah, because Torah, hu v'chachma siyecha. And that's an absolute unity. Even more so than mitzvahs. When I do something that you tell me to do, I'm bottled to you, but I don't become one with you. There isn't that unity. You, don't, you can't truly unite with someone on a spiritual level by doing something. It's a physical act. You also can't connect to Hashem through your Midas. Because Midas are by definition, are yeshes, are egotistical. What is a Midas? What are emotions? Emotions are, I feel. There is no emotion in the absence of self. An emotion doesn't exist in a vacuum. Two plus two equals four exists in a vacuum. Even if no one knows two plus two equals four, it's the truth. 
when we are when 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 I when I know when I learn two plus two equals four, I'm tapping into a truth, an objective truth which is beyond me. If I like you, am I tapping into a love that's beyond me? No, that's it's me. I like you. There is no emotion in the absence of a human being who feels them, and emotions are how I view the world in relation to me, not intellect. Intellect intellect is very objective. Intellect is bitledic. Intellect doesn't have to do with me. The moment, by the way, that I insert myself into my intellect, then it gets all messed up. Which is why if you give a judge shaykhad, <laughs> so right, and why is that? Because what you've done is you've injected emotions into the person's seichel, and now the person isn't thinking straight. Everything he's thinking is about himself. What about libos? Which is the opposite. That I'm nothing, that... Here, here. Uh, 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 Anav is not is not a I'm midah. I'm the nothing that it, I'm putting the ikar is me that I'm I have a a, a midah of anivos. So even by anivos, uh, when we're talking, the word midah can mean different things. Okay. In the context that we're talking about of emotions, anav is not an emotion. All right. Uh, it, in other words, the word midah in the larger sense can also mean uh, a, a a character trait. Okay, so, the, but when, we, when, when we're talking about midas, the six midas, we're not talking about character traits, we're talking about emotions. And emotions are, by definition, egotistical. They're self-centered. That's the definition of an emotion. My feeling about something. Whereas seichel is not about me at all. I could learn a daf kemar, it has nothing to do with me. When I learn Torah, my mind is connected to Hashem in a way of complete bittel. Again, which the, which the heart can't achieve. The heart can't achieve that bittel on its own. Because the heart is by definition self-centered. But my mind, which is the most bittel part of who I am, is able to connect to Hashem in a pure way. When I understand a daf gemara, that's my mind 100% capturing Hashem, and I am not part of the equation. That's your mind. I understand. Mind. But the, your mind can do I understand. That. But yeah. the, 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 um, the uniqueness of the human mind is the ability to be able to be objective, to be able to travel outside of itself. I, my mind can, can even understand you. In other words, my mind can divest itself of self-interest and understand something which is completely opposing. And the Torah is Hashem, the Torah is Kadma Ilam, the Torah is higher than the whole world. When my mind is connecting to Hashem, what's happening is I am at this point in an absolute divakos and unity with Hashem. My mind is completely connected to Hashem. To the point that my unity with Hashem right now is such a great unity that Al Rebbe describes it in Perike as a Yichud Nifla She'ein Yichud Kamayu as an incredible wondrous unity which no there is no such unity that exists in this world no other there is no parallel to it and that is because at this moment my mind is completely one with Hashem because my mind right now absorbed the Torah digested the Torah what is in my mind I am right now completely one with Hashem and this is a theme which uh, appears several times in Lukuti Amarim how although mitzvahs are very important and perhaps even mitzvahs are more important than Talmud Torah which is why the halacha is that when there's a, a mitzvah which no one else can do a mitzvah she'i after aliyasi sa'idei acherim so mevatel in Talmud Torah but notwithstanding the importance of mitzvahs in terms of the unity with Hashem there's nothing that compares to Torah and that's Bina Bina, only through Bina which is the hei law, the higher hei through Bina, I have the ability to connect Hashem. So once I have fixed the Eitata, once I fixed the, the lower He, which is my Machshav Dibar Maisa, and I've restored my Neshama back to its state, at that point, I am ready. As I Ruach of Rabbi Vatetari, as Dr. Rebbe says, I am pure and I am ready to absolutely connect to Hashem and unify myself with Hashem through the Limud Torah. And this unity is the unity that my Neshama experienced before I came down here into this world even. However, as you pointed out, 
people. This people lo- when we tshuva. study Torah, it ha- what? Sorry. People have has not done any tshuva. They're learning Torah. So then, then that. Well, what, 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 where's the unity there? The uni- the unity is there also, but ultimately you're skipping tshuva tata. Yes, what, what, the whole what, point of tshuva law is, in other words, it's not the whole point of Lumbat Torah, but the, 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 there's a progression over here. We're talking about restoring the neshama. You can't restore the neshama to, to complete unity with Hashem when the neshama is still in the, in the clutches of klipa because you're a payer koil. So once you've done, not, not that you shouldn't study Torah until you finish doing tshuva, but the ultimate limit of Torah and the ultimate yichud and restoration of the neshama to its source follows tshuva tata. Follows tshuva tata. However, this, this Nimut HaTorah needs to be done B'dechilu Urechimu, as you mentioned, with reverence for Hashem and with love for Hashem. Because ultimately, you know, we talked, we said that Seichel is objective and Midah is our self. But that's why, by the way, Midah are so much harder to fix than Seichel. Think about that for a moment. Our feelings because they're, 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 not, they're, they're so subjective, they're not objective. They're who we are. To change a midah, I think Rabbi Saul Salanter once said, that it's, hard, it's harder to change one midah than, uh, than to finish us. Whereas the mind to study is not a big deal. The purpose is to, the, the ultimate goal is to study Torah B'dechil or Chimu, which means that the unity that you're achieving and accomplishing with Hashem when studying Torah actually pervades also your midas, also your mitzvahs. Aven yira on their own cannot connect, cannot connect you to Hashem because Aven yira are subjective, they're about self. But if you're studying Torah and uniting to Hashem, but you're studying Torah with Yira Hashem and with Avas Hashem, then what's happening is that you're drawing down this connection of Hashem also into your mitzvahs into your feelings, into your emotions, into your passions, into who you are, into your personality. And then we have a person who is completely at one with and connected to Hashem. And this is a topic, the Tshuva Yilah, which the Altarebbe will continue expanding upon in Mir Tashem in the next, um, in the next two prakim. But the first Altarebbe has a question before we get there. The Rebbe says, we know the famous Gemara that says that the question becomes if a tzaddik gomer also has the ability to do tshuva, tshuva yila, as mentioned, then what's the advantage of being a bal tshuva in a simple sense? In other words, what's the advantage of the person who has done averis and done tshuva over the tzaddik? The tzaddik can say, I have the same advantage. I'm also doing tshuva. In other words, the whole point of the Gemara is that doing Averis tak is a terrible thing. But if a person does shuvah from Averis, that person can reach even a higher level than a Tzadigam. But how, why and how is that? L'chayra, Tzadigam could also, also do shuvah. So the Atreb addresses and says, Umay las bali tshuva al tzadikim gemurim bazem. The mayla of bali tshuva over tzadikim gemurim in this area he commissioned of Bezeir Akadish Parshas Chayisara, as the Zayar says in Parshas Chayisara, the Inun, that they, the Balichuva, Mashhi Alaihu, Biruusa de Liba Yatir, they draw upon themselves a greater desire of the heart, a greater love, Ubechelo Sagi, and they have so much more energy and strength, Li Iskarava the Malka, to approach and come near the king, Hashem Vichulu. At the end of the day, the idea of the excitement and enthusiasm, the energy and the passion, which a Baal on a very simple level has, the person who has done the Avera, the person who has been in a place of blackness and darkness, a place of death, a place of, 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 of Klippa, a place devoid of Kedusha. When that person re-embraces Hashem, the energy and the excitement that's over there is greater than that of the Tzaddik. So yes, can the Tzaddik Amr do Tshuva? Tshuva absolutely. And ultimately, do they both reach the same state of Yichud and Hashem? Arguably, yes. But when they reach that Madriga, you can't compare the energy, the love, and the excitement of the Baal Tshuva to the energy, the love, and the excitement of the Tzaddik. And ultimately, that's the goal. As the Al-Tarebbe said in the Maimur that we quoted earlier, Zek al Ha'adam. I believe we've mentioned this in the past. Al-Tarebbe says many, we know that... Um, 
many times in, in the Mamar of the Alter Rebbe, he asked the question, Lama Yarda Haneshama Guf? Why does the Neshama come down into the body? For us, I don't know if that's a question that disturbs our sleep exactly. <laughs> but it bothered the Alter Rebbe a lot. Bothered the Alter Rebbe. What for us? What for? The Neshama was up there in Gan Eden. Shama was up there in the highest place. And it comes down here into a goof, a goof gashmi, into a world, a world which is filled with taivas and klipas, a world that's filled with pitfalls and temptations. And by the way, even if you don't fall, even if you have no temptation, still, you're a yesh. Why do I have to be a yesh? The, the, the ultimate state of constriction is the fact that the neshama comes down to guf. It's the ultimate uh, it's the ultimate incarceration. Someone mentioned to me of late that we know that uh, the Baal Shem Tev says we'll talk a little more about the Baal Shem Tev in a few moments after this week, this upcoming week is the birthday of the Baal Shem Tev. And one of the most famous things Dr. Rebbe says is that from everything that a person sees or hears, we have to take a heira b'avayda Hashem. And everyone experiences everything differently, even when the, you have uh, millions of people that are all experiencing the same thing. So everyone experiences differently and everyone takes a different heira b'avayda Hashem. So he says that he was thinking about the whole quarantine and corona and everyone had to be home Someone was telling me. Oh, someone, yeah, actually, was someone who's a, a a Talmud in this year, not not physically, but someone who uh, who watches this year. And he says that to him, the takeaway for him was the pain that we felt at being confined in our homes is the pain that the neshama feels at being confined in the guf. And maybe the whole corona was to get us to empathize a little with the neshama, to sympathize a little with the neshama, understand what it means to be stuck. To be stuck in this unhospitable, even if it's your own house, but still, you're stuck. What is the purpose of the neshama coming down here? And time after time, the Rebbe says, the reason why the neshama comes down here is to do tshuva. That is the purpose. What did it do before? The <laughs> Maila, you, can, you, can't, you can't return if you didn't leave. The purpose of the neshama is to do tshuva. The Avas Hashem and the level of unity, which even though here the Alter Rebbe says that the purpose is to restore it to the way it was beforehand, the truth is you're restoring it to even a higher level. And the Neshama reaches an even greater level than it was beforehand when it comes on. That's the whole purpose of doing, doing tshuva, coming down here. As we mentioned, this upcoming week, Monday is going to be Yud Ches Elul, Bechsidim is known as Chai Elul, the 18th day of Elul, which is the birthday of the Shnei Ama'oyres HaGadolim, the two great luminaries, the Baal Shem Tev. The Baal Shem Tev was born in the year Chai Elul, in the year Tof Nun Ches, in the year 1698. And 47 years later, on the Baal Shem Tev's 47th birthday, was born the Baal HaTanya. And, and Chai Elul of Tof Kufei, of 1745, is the birthday of, of the Alter Rebbe. And Mechsidim, they say that Chai Elul gives a highest in the month of Elul. Chai, the 18th of Elul. <coughs> it imbues life and energy into the month of Elul. And what is the Avoid of Elul? The Avoid of Elul is the Avoid of Tshuva. In a, general, uh, in a general sense. Which is also alluded to in one of the Rasha Tevis in Elul, which is Umala Shama Likecha Es Levavcha Ve'es Levav, which is talking about Tshuva. And that is really, everything that we're learning about over here gives us a whole new insight, a new understanding of what Shuvah is, and what we're trying to accomplish. And in a way, it also puts us simcha in Shuvah. It gives us highest, it gives us energy. When we understand, as we mentioned earlier, that we're just restoring ourselves. You know, so many people when it comes to Shuvah, I'm a terrible person, I'm an awful person, I'm a flawed person. And really, what the Alter Rebbe and the Baal Shem Tev, and Chassidus, what they've taught us is that no, 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 you're, misun you're misunderstanding tshuva. Tshuva is not you're a terrible person. Tshuva is you're an amazing person that's gone a little astray and you got to go back to yourself. You have to, uh, it's all within you. It's all there. 
And that itself is a tremendous, a tremendous energy boost, understanding who we are. That my neshama really is a chelik alekami malam. And how my neshama really at its source is not only vayipach, not only as the breath comes out, but even the breath as it is in Hashem before it comes out. And I just, and, and through my avodah I can reach back over there. The story is told about the Baal Shem Tev, that he once went to a town. And uh, when the, we know that the Baal Shem Tev, when he went around from city to city, he would, um, <coughs> he would engage the townspeople in conversation. He was a populist, the Baal Shem Tev. And he traveled. Unlike his Talmud, the Mazit Shemagid, didn't travel. Sat in Mezrich and he had a group of, of holy, holy, uh, what's called the Chavrai Kadisha, the holy group, and he taught them and they spread his teachings. The Baal Shem Tev went from city to city. And he would talk to the simple folk. We know that part of his thing, that part of his avoid was, he would go to people and ask them, how are you doing? How's business? How's your health? Just to, he wanted to elicit from them that they should say, Baruch Hashem, Amir Hashem, Be'ezus Hashem. And he went to one city, and it was before Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, and he asked, they asked the, and he was talking to the people, and he, you know, he asked them in the course of a conversation, tell me a little about your Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, what it's like over here. So they said, we have a Rav, he's our Hassan, he's, he's unbelievable. It's just very, very strange that whenever we get to the al Khat, he starts singing and dancing. And no, we don't really understand that, but we, since he's such a great uh, holy person, we, you know, we, uh, we defer. So Baal Shem Tev went to the Rav and said, I heard that when you come to the al Khat, you're singing and dancing. That's, that's strange, maybe explain that to me. So he told the, 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 the this Rav told the Baal Shem Tev, he says the, in, the, the king lives in a palace and he has many, many workers in the palace. One of the workers in the palace, the job of the worker is, is that he sweeps and cleans the courtyard and cleans out all the filth. You know, the horses are there and there's, the, there's um, what they make and he has to, uh, but because he knows that he's working for the king and because he knows that he's cleaning the king's palace and he knows that the result will be that the king is going to have a clean palace so he, when he's sweeping away the dirt he's dancing and he's singing. So the same thing over here as I'm sweeping and cleaning away the dirt of Kuala Yisrael how can I, and how could I help myself but to sing and dance. Now the Basanta says that's great keep on doing it keep, keep, on, keep on going the way that you're going. But it's really this idea of adding a chayis into tshuva, an understanding of what tshuva is and what we're trying to accomplish. And uh, we know the big emphasis of, of chassidus on, on, on simcha davka. And that's something which is also emphasized in this week's parsha. but we have the pasuk, tachas asher le'evadatas Hashem le'kecha b'simcha v'tuv le'evav. How all bad things happen because of a lack of simcha. All good things are a result of simcha. And that includes tshuva. As we'll learn, mir Hashem, in the coming prakim, the idea, the simcha of tshuva is primarily by tshuva ilah. In other words, the tshuva tata, the lower level of tshuva, when you're you know, dealing with Davedas, so over there primarily, it's more of a broken heart. But when you, especially when you graduate into the higher level of tshuva, of tshuva ilah, when you sit down with the, with the, with the, with the Mishnayis, with the Gemara, with the Shulchan Arach, with the, with the Sefer Musar, or Sefer Chassidus, after you've done tshuva and connect, it has to be with a tremendous, tremendous simcha. The son of the of the of the Balatanya, the Mittel Rebbe, he 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 writes that some people who by them, you know, tshuva is always with uh, with seriousness and with sadness and um, and constant crying. And he says these people are missing the point. He says, imagine a son who has drifted away from his father, the king, a prince drifted away. And when the, you know, when the prince realizes where, what he, where, where he is and what his predicament is and how far away he is from his father, so he goes and he starts crying and he starts searching for the king and looking for him and finally he finds the king and reunites. Now imagine if after he reunites with the king he's still crying and crying and crying. He's missing the point. Now's the time to be happy. You've reunited with the king. The same thing is also, there's no question that there's an element in tshuva a, a very strong element of a leiv nishbar, of a broken heart. But ultimately, this leads us to tremendous simcha, knowing that the neshama returns to Hashem and is restored. And that brings us to incredible simcha, which is a primary message of chasidus, which gives chayis, which gives energy into 
the month of El and the Avayda of El. But I also want to connect it specifically to what we spoke about in Tanya. I mentioned before that the Alter Rebbe was born on the Baal Shem 47th birthday. The Rebbe Rayat, the previous Rebbe, points out that means that the Alter Rebbe was born on the day when the Baal Shem Tev started saying Kapitel Mem Ches in Tehillim. According to a Hasidic custom, so every day a person says the Kapitel of Tehillim, which is according to um, the number of years. But you always say one more. So a person who's 47 says Kapitel Mem Ches. A person who's 13 says Kapitel Yudal. That's because on your birthday you enter the next year. So, for example, when, when you're born, you're zero years old, but you're in your first year. You're not in your zero year, you're in your first year. And once you, when you become one years old, that means you have one year Before. behind you. You have one year in, the, in, in your suitcase, and now you're in, you've entered your second year. So you'd say the capital Tillon, what you enter into. For the Babachers this year, that uh, poses somewhat of a challenge, because uh, the Minig is also, uh, we say, the capital of the Rebbe. And because this year um, is 118 years since the birth of the Rebbe in 1902, so that means that many Lubavitchers this year are saying Kapitel Kuf Yutes every single day of the year. That's the Rebbe's Kapitel of this year. Not yeah. Easy. What? Not easy. It's not easy, but if you're Hasid, you do it, you do it, and you do it with Simcha. Can't they break it up? What you could. There are a lot of things that you could do. The question is what you want to do. There's no, there's no chiyub, it's not an obligation, it's uh, something which the chassid does because of a hergish, because of a feeling, and because of an, uh, and it depends on the feeling, and if your feeling is a little less, then you break it up, and which is also amazing if you break it up and say it once a week or once a month, whatever it may be, but there, that's why I said there are many chassidim who say it every day. So the Friedrich Rebbe says that the day when the Alter Rebbe was born begins Kapitel Mamches, Kapitel Mamches begins with the words, Godel Hashem umuhulal me'oid be'ir elikeinu. And this actually is a pasuk which is expounded upon many times in Hasidus. That Godel Hashem Muhulul Miyoid. When is Hashem great and when is Hashem praised? Godel Hashem, Yudke Vavke, Beir Elikenu, when he is in the city of Elikenu, which is Elikim. What does that mean? <clears throat> In Sefer Yitzirah, it talks about cities. It talks about how a city is made up of houses, and a house is made up of stones. This whole world is known as one big city. It's a city that's made up of houses, and houses that are made up of stones. In other words, Yudke Vavke, the name Yudke Vavke, the, the, name, the name Hashem, is a name which represents, this is something that we learned about in Sharikh al Vamuna, absolute achtos, absolute unity. There is no differentiation. Hashem Echad. Hashem Melech, Hashem Molech, Hashem Yimlech. By Hashem, in Hashem there is no differentiation in past, future, and present. <laughs> there is no east, west, north, and south. In Alikim, the idea of a ear, the idea of this whole city, which is with, a, with, with so much multiplicity, that all comes from Alikinu, that all comes from the name of Hashem. What is the ultimate greatness of Godel Hashem Umuhul al When is Hashem great? When Hashem is felt, Beir Alikinu, when Hashem is felt here in this world, a world which is characterized, Taka. Not by Achtos, but a world which is characterized by being, it's a city with so many different inhabitants and so many different elements to it. But when Hashem is Be'ir Aleikeinu, when Hashem is felt within this world, that is the ultimate God of Hashem. That is the ultimate greatness of Hashem. The ultimate greatness of Hashem, the ultimate infinity of Hashem, the Bleakful of Hashem, how, where do we see it? When Hashem is expressed and felt in a place where you wouldn't expect Him to be found. 
<coughs> you would think that Hashem is limited to the, to the area of Achtos, to the area of Bligvul. and But no, when we have here a world, and within the world Hashem can be present also, that is the ultimate God of Hashem. Why is that so? How, how, how is it explained? How is Hashem felt in this world? When we in our... What? Why is it so great? That's so... That's... Um, the ultimate bleakful of Hashem, the ultimate absolute, what you call kol yachal of Hashem, is that the actus of Hashem can be expressed even in an area which seems to be completely inhospitable to who He is, which is this world. And this very much characterizes what the Alter Rebbe was trying to do and what he was trying to accomplish over what the Baal Shem Tev had done. In other words, the Baal Shem Tev laid down the foundation of Chassidus, which was the necessary step one. And then, two generations later, the Alter Rebbe came along and he brought it down Be'ir Alekeinu. Meaning, the Baal Shem Tev but something was avoid was Gili Yolokos, revel- revealing Hashem, which he did through incredible miracles. But it wasn't only through the incredible miracles. The, Al- the Baal Shem Tev was encouraging and nurturing and fostering the Yolokos, the godliness within us, which is why the Baal Shem Tev encouraged Amuna and Betachin and Simcha. These are all godly characteristics that we have within us. And the Baal Shem Tev was encouraged to the, the, the Yidin at that time with a message which spread like, like, uh, like wildfire to open themselves up to a higher reality, a reality of holiness, a reality of Kedusha, to Bittl. And instead of being so self preoccupied, and you can be 100% from when Hashem retired or mitzvahs in the Talmud Chachem and it's all about self and it's all about gaiva and it's all about yeshus. And the Baal Shem Tev opened us up to something higher, to godliness and asked us to open a window and allow ourselves to bask a little in that chayis and that energy and that holiness which exists in the world and which exists within every single one of us. And once that had taken root, came along the Altar Rebbe, the Baal HaTanya, and the Alter Rebbe says, and now we're on to step two. Step two is that that godliness, that holiness, we need to now introduce that into our minds, into our seichel, into our chachma, bina, and das, into our irelikeno. Because when is God el Hashem? When do we have the greatness of Hashem? Not when it remains something which we're aware of, but we can't really process and digest and make sense out of. The ultimate God El Hashem, when, it, when is the greatness of Hashem? When is the great, where, where do we find the greatness of Hashem and the greatness of the Neshama? When we can sit down and mentally process it so that it becomes part of our reality. When we can do that. In other words, in our ear in our minds, when we can process the God El Hashem, the, 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 the Hashem, that's when we have God El Hashem, that is the greatest accomplishment that there is. And this really relates to what we're talking about in Tanya over here also. We talked here about Shuva Yilam is Yisasik Bayraisa, is to study Torah. Because the ultimate unity with Hashem is when we study Torah. However, the Alter Rebbe right away adds in from the Zayar that when we're learning Torah, it has to be Bidichilu or Rechimu de Kuchabrichu. With love and fear. Because if the unity remains only in the mind and remains detached from our personality and who we are and my feelings and my emotions, then I'm missing the point. I need to get to that dechilu or that, that yichud nifla that I'm having. Silim that toira should also permeate my feelings. <coughs> it should be my experience, the way I feel, the way I view the world, not only intellectually but also emotionally also. And ultimately, this is really the message of Hasidus Chabad. The lower down that you draw the godliness, the greater you have the God El Hashem. And that is the idea of Dira B'Takhtoinim, which we've spoken about many times. So, the Alter Rebbe came and he drew down the Lakuts of the Baal Shem Tev into Chachma Bin Das. But ultimately, it's not meant to remain even in the Chachma Bin Das. It's not only meant to remain in the, in the mind, but B'Dechilu Rechimu. Das Alekei Avicha V'Avdeyu B'Lei V'Shalem. 
Once we have the das al of Icha, our job then is to bring it down, believe Shalom, to bring it into the heart, and that brings us to the ultimate Godel Hashem. Shabbos, everyone.